Pregame.com. Welcome back. Pregame.tv breaking down. Brady Cannon, a resident golf expert. He runs BK's Golf Service. If you ever need to golf, I recommend you speak to this man. And he is a fine football all-around sports handicapper and a great golf handicapper as well. And, Brady, you're going to be breaking down the Bay Hill, Arnold Palmer Invitational somewhere in the state of Florida. Indeed, and this is the fourth week on the uh, Florida Swing, and the Florida Swing has been good to us. We started with the Honda Classic, uh, had the World Golf Championship at Doral, and then last week uh, in uh, the, near the Tampa area for the Valspar. Um, this will be the last stop on the Florida Swing, and then uh, three weeks from now they'll head to Augusta for the Masters. Um, but this is a classic tournament. You know, you, you've got Hogan's uh, Alley, you know, at Colonial. You've got Jack's tournament for the Memorial, <laughs> and you've got our Arnie's place, and, and these are three special ones here that the, that the real big guys show up mm -hmm. for. Lee Westwood's there. Now, the big news that came out today is Tiger has right. withdrawn, and uh, he had some back issues at the Honda Classic where he had to withdraw. Uh, we saw it at Doral. He skipped last week. And, and you said that the, this is actually may make him a better play in the Masters. So. Yeah, very interesting. You know, people were wondering, gosh, why are you playing this week? You right. know, you, the back is obviously an issue. You've got the Masters coming up. We know that that's truly what's sure. important to you. He was an 8-1 to one favorite, uh, actually the second favorite, to win the Masters. And when they found out that he withdrew today, he moved to 6-1 to one wow. and is now a co-favorite with Rory McIlroy. If I was Tiger Woods and I, like, had a problem, I, what I would do is I would fake a back injury my next tournament <laughs> on, like, after nine holes. And I would take a 6-iron and I'd play the back nine and I wouldn't hit more than a 6-iron on any hole because then I would get – you know, great PR. Oh, he gutted it out. Yeah. <laughs> he gutted Finished it out. The round. Even though He's the man, a warrior. Even yeah. though the man could not even hit, you know, a he hybrid. He barely walk. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he, he basically went around and, and, and shot with a six iron and, and a nine iron for the entire round. Wouldn't that be cool? So basically well, he faking got, an injury for sympathy purposes. He, yes. He, he wasn't faking, but he got that uh, type of uh, applause when he won mm -hmm. the U.S. Open True. on about half a leg at 20 Yeah, he Pines. did play with a broken leg. That, yeah. yeah, was very impressive. Was it a legit broken leg? Or? Uh, uh, yeah, it, it yeah. was. It was. I, he took a lot of time off after that. No, yeah, I can't remember that. No. If you saw him go out of a sand trap mm -hmm. in that in that tournament, it was like he he was walking like I was walking when I had torn my ACL. It was Ouch. it was really like yeah. a noticeable limp. Like yeah, good for him. Interesting about the Florida Swing. What we have here is we have a lot of ball strikers courses, and you guys have uh, heard me talk mm -hmm. about. You know, there's courses that are made for long bombers, and then there's courses that take a little bit more, bit more negotiating with dog legs and water and bunkers, and you have to be able to hit greens. You have to be a little bit more accurate off the and tee. Ball striking is really ball movement, mm -hmm. right? When well, you say balls, because I when it, of course you got to strike yeah, the ball well. Right. You know, how can right. it be you, a bad ball? You don't striker? strike the ball. It's about hitting day. it really crisp and accurate okay. and. Hitting Hitting greens. Ball striking is technically a stat that involves uh, greens in regulation and, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think what it's combined with, greens in regulation and, and accuracy or mm -hmm. something like that. But um, that, that's what it's about versus guys that are just bombing the right. ball. They don't care where it lands. They're going to chip up onto the green. They're going to putt, birdie, John go Daly to the next style. hole. Yeah, that type of thing. And, hey, there's, you know, some of the best players in the world are like that. Phil Mickelson's a sure. bomber. You know, VJ Singh has been a bomber. But, the, you know, some of the best players in the world are also very good ball strikers and able to shape their shots. Okay. It, it seems to me the um, – um, like whenever I see those gimmicky 330-yard par fours, mm -hmm. and a lot of the pros lay up and mm -hmm. chip up, and they, I almost think it's more they want, they're looking for style points to like say they're hitting fairways and stuff. Yeah. I, it seems like they do better. If I they think just they're trying to play it. it smart, and, and I and I love those holes on the right. PGA Tour because they make the guys think, what should I do here? Should I, you know how how many strokes am I out of the lead? Should I take the driver out and go mm -hmm. for it? You but know? they're so deadly from the sand if they can just put it in the in the trap yeah, around the true. green, it's a birdie, you know. Yep. No. You're absolutely right. And, and there's a hole like that at Riviera um, where, you know, guys can – come out of there with a six or a seven or, or a two or a three, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I love golf holes like that on tour. Um, and, and you're going to see, you know, I think a, a great course here at Bay Hill, Arnie's place where you're going to have some shot making and that's what it's going to take. I'm, I'm pointing to some things that it's going to take this week are driving accuracy and length. Tigers won here eight times right. and uh, we know he bombs the ball. But uh, again, like I say, it's going to take some accuracy and some ball striking. So I'm going to look at accuracy 
see off the tee combined with length, length, which they call total driving. Okay. And then I also want to look at guys that can hit greens in regulation. And that's really been uh, true throughout the Florida swing here at the Honda, Doral, and the Valspar. You know, guys who are accurate off the tee and ball striking. Bubba Watson's had a phenomenal year. Mm -hmm. He's good in all those categories. He's a favorite here this week. Gary Woodland hits it a ton and is also 24th in greens and regulation. He's number one in total driving, meaning he hits it long right. and straight. And I think that's the type of player you're going to see uh, rise to the top this week. Very good. And obviously you're looking at your matchups. We're not going to look into the needle in the haystack. And yeah. I um, What's interesting, I talked about the futures odds and um, – uh, I saw that. That's right, and, I, and yeah. I said my best bet is who's overvalued. I said every team's overvalued. All, <laughs> all the odds on the futures are, are ridiculously right. low. I, and I said you can shop around. You find your North Carolina 50 to 1. You know, you come by Lagasse later tonight, and I'll give you 60 to 1. You yeah. know, I'll gross you up by 20% exactly. on, 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 on the bigger ones. Same thing with the golf tour. I hate playing the needle in the haystack. Who's going to win? too hard. And, and some guys will maybe play 10 different guys. You hope you hit one and, mm -hmm. and you turn sure, a profit. Sure. But, um, I, you know. I, That's getting, at least with NASCAR, which is kind of a similar concept. Concept. Sure. It's getting a lot tougher to do. I mean, golf, it's, you've got even more players to worry about. But right. You know, at, at one point, you could do that. You could find several, you know, four or five drivers a mm -hmm. week, and you know, you'd turn a profit over the course of the season. But it's just getting a lot harder to do my, that. My favorite, we just had the, you know, the, the event at the Speedway here, mm -hmm. sure. and I saw someone go up to the window at one of the local station properties and bet seven drivers all at six to one. And, <laughs> oh, I, and wow. I, I didn't have the heart to tell them, you know, you either break even or lose them all. You know? yeah. But, oh, well. Yeah. You know. Hey, hopefully uh, they had fun. You have a matchup you like in, in, in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to take a look at Keegan Bradley against Patrick Reed. And I, I was telling David before we got here this evening, Evening. I don't know if you saw this, Steve, but Patrick Reed uh, at Doral, he won the event. And this young kid has only been on tour for a couple of years. And he came right out. They showed an interview with him and Dan Hicks in the middle of the broadcast. And then also after the round, uh, after he'd won in his post-round speech, he came out and basically said, I'm a top five player in the world. <laughs> I like it. He's, yeah. He and, uh, and yeah, he that's took, what I thought. Uh, it's like a promo. Like he, perfect he took a beating promo. on Twitter and everywhere. But, uh, you know, you got to like the kid's confidence. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and Patrick sure. Reed, I mean, I said, you, you guys haven't even heard of this. Guy. Not no, many people heard have guy. heard of him. Well, you know, you, 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 meant, you mentioned Hogan's Alley, and I expect to see all the Hulkamaniacs follow. <laughs> so I don't get out much in the golf betting world. So whatever, whatever you tell me to bet, if I'm not too busy, I get down. Yes. yes. You want to make this one official? Let's, Let's do, do, it. do it. All right. It's the Arnold Palmer Invitational at the Bay Hill Lodge. The final stop on the Florida swing for this year as they continue to get primed for the Masters. Unfortunately, Tiger Woods did have to pull out, but still plenty of top names in the business here. 20 of the top 50 players in the world. Adam Scott, Lee Westwood, some big names there. Henrik Stenson, they'll all be here. And two I'm looking at, Keegan Bradley and Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed coming off of the win at Doral. A wonderful victory for this kid. His third victory in his last 14 tournaments and he is in rare company with that feat. Only Tiger, Phil, Rory, and Sergio are the other players to have ever done that. And so maybe it's not so far-fetched that Reed is one of the top five players in the world. But basically, I am fading him in this matchup because of that statement and because of all the heat he took after that statement. I've got to believe this is going through this guy's head. He took last week off. This will be his first event since he won at Doral. We always like to fade a guy after a win, even though he's had a week in between he's been reading those press clippings about this buzz about his statements that he made and I got to believe that's a little bit in his head despite all the confidence he has I still have to believe that is going to get into his grill a little bit at least the first couple days of this tournament meanwhile on the other side of the ball Keegan Bradley is favored in this matchup minus 125 this truly is one of the best players in the world who has won a major tournament before he is very good in total driving Keegan Bradley in total driving is 29th. He hits greens. He putts well. As far as greens and regulation and putting, Reed ranks a little better, but if you look at Reed's history on the Florida courses, he has not done well. He was cut last year at this tournament. He was cut at uh, Tampa the year before, and he was also 58th at the Honda uh, the year before in 2013. Doesn't have a great history on the Florida swing. His wins have come out on the other side of the country except for Doral. I'm going to go with Keegan Bradley, minus one 25 over Patrick Reed at Bay Hill.
Excellent. One question before we wrap it up um, with the March Madness going on. Do you see less product out there on the golf matchups, or is it just business as usual? No, it's pretty bi- pretty much business as usual. And this is a it, this is more of a marquee tournament, so you're going to get you know more interest, more matchups. Last week was you know not a real big high profile tournament, but it turned out to be a great watch and a terrific course to watch. Mm-hmm. It was it was hard enough that these guys you saw guys struggle and shoot eighty. Right. It was fair enough that you got, saw guys shoot 64, but everybody was a bogey away from, you know, interrupting mm-hmm. their oh, round. Wow. It, was, it was a nice challenge, but uh, no, no, no interruption here. Uh, and, you know, this course, like I said, is marquee. Then we have a couple of, uh, we, we, we go down a bit with the Valero, and then we go up a bit with Houston, and then we've got the Masters. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, okay. you're going to be the one person watching the golf and betting on Friday yes. on the golf. <laughs> I would imagine so. Um, so people can check those out over at pregame, of course, dot com on, on the forums, and you put up a free play on that? A couple free picks typically in the forum, the video, of course, and then the premium plays as well. Very good. Well, as we always do, thank you to the listeners for joining us each and every week here. It's our pleasure breaking down all the different sports, obviously with an emphasis on March Madness. The A-Team will be back Thursday night. Marco D'Angelo with Ken Thompson and I believe Brian Leonard, if we can get him back from spring training. Not sure if Brian is going to make his, a cameo appearance. He's doing his baseball intense handicapping right now. But thank you again. Check out our videos. Check out their videos on Thursday night, pregame.tv, and good luck during this March Madness.